This story I heard years ago from Rabbi Simon, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Jacobson. <clears throat> and the story is like this, about the Kloisenberger Rebbe. Kloisenberger Rebbe, his name was Rabbi Halberstrom. He was a very genius person, a very holy person, a very kind person. And, but like we said before, Barzell, he was a very, also a very strong person. And he went through the Holocaust, and uh, he lost his whole family. He had 11 sons, his wife, his parents. <clears throat> he lost everyone. And in fact, somehow or other, he survived, and he even remarried. And he had, I think, I think he had another 11 children, but he had, he had a, a, a large family also afterwards. <clears throat> There's a lot of amazing stories told about him. Very wonderful, <clears throat> amazing stories told about him. Um, but, so, but, but in, in, <clears throat> let me just tell one of them. <clears throat> After the, uh, the war was finished, World War II, and so the Allied forces went around to these different concentration camps and they found anyone who was still left alive <clears throat> and they brought them to recuperation centers. <clears throat> and all these people were like, you know, half crazy, 98% crazy, 10% crazy from the things that they saw. And you can imagine what it was. I mean, these people that were in just now in this uh, Kfar Be'eri, you know, this, this, the, the, <clears throat> the terrible uh, the <clears throat> murder that just happened now a couple of months ago so these people saw things that just shook them up totally it's, I, I heard somewhere that all of them are under treatment all of them are under psychological treatment they're all just shaken up and broken the, what they saw lasted for a few hours two days here's these people that saw the same thing for four years every day they saw people being murdered, tortured, raped, worst possible things, the children. The... And so years and years. Okay, so the Kloisenberger Rebbe, he was one of those few that survived. And they he, he was in one of these recuperation camps. They had kind of these camps in Germany, all these different places. And they tried as well as they could to, to accommodate the the survivors as much as they could. They gave them food to eat, good food. They gave them, and they tried to give them kosher food, whatever, as, well, as much as they could. Whatever they asked for, <clears throat> they tried to accommodate them. And basically, they didn't know what these people needed. And a lot of times, the people themselves didn't know what they needed because they were, they had been broken by what they saw. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing they did know was Yom Kippur. Comes Yom Kippur, and they, they know that that's the Day of Atonement. That's a holy day of the Jewish people. And uh, I guess they asked some of the other Jews, whatever, to the, 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 the committee, and they decided that we have to get a big tent. We're going to give, make the Jews, they're going to make a, the prayers. So there was a lot of different types of Jews. There were a lot of non-religious Jews. There were a lot of anti-religious Jews. There were political Jews. The Jews were tremendously, tremendously divided. And there were communist Jews, and there were atheist Jews, and there was the kind of... The, all sorts of Jews, the whole gamut was there. <clears throat> but one thing they all had in common was they had all saw hell. They all saw, you know. So all of them, their brains and their hearts and their souls were all scrambled up. They didn't know what was going on. But nevertheless, Yom Kippur, they made Yom Kippur. <clears throat> so they got a big tent. They made a big tent for them. You know, the army wasn't lacking. They, they had all these soldiers that were there that were basically, you know, trained to fight. And there was no war anymore. So they... they no problem. They built a, a, a whole tent for them, and they got a hold of prayer books for them, and they got chairs that were as comfortable as they could, and they whatever they made, they made the place as <clears throat> user-friendly as possible, a big place. And there was, let's say, you know, for our purposes, let's say there were, you know, 300 people that came to participate. So they all came. Now, one of the prayers of Yom Kippur is a prayer which is called al Khait. It said like, what is it? It's five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, 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 for sure. 
<clears throat> but these people, what's what psychology? You can't have to bring psychology psychiatrists to to, to you know to who knows a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand people. Who knows? And then who who was experienced in things like this, right? And not only that, all the, all the psychologists and the psychiatrists in those days, especially, were like half Freudians. You know, you're gonna person went through the Holocaust. They try to relate it back to his Oedipus complex. You know. <clears throat> okay, so okay, so here the here's all these people. And there's Yom Kippur. Now, one of the main prayers of Yom Kippur is a prayer which is called Al Chet. Al Chet means on the sin, on the sin that we did with our eyes, on the sin we did with our foreheads, on the sin that we ran to do bad, on the sins that we did with it. So, and that's a sin. So, okay. So they, 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 this committee, whatever it was, they picked you know somebody who's going to be a chazan. They had somebody who had a nice voice and knew how to pray, <clears throat> and. They chose the rabbi. They chose the rabbi of Kloisenberg. He would be the rabbi. Anybody had any questions, you know, what to do, they would come to him and they would ask questions. <clears throat> and so they started praying. So they, they started the prayers, al chet. They say al chet. <clears throat> That's one of the prayers they say, al chet. So it says, the, 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 the one saying the prayers is al chet shechatanu b'yetzahara, al chet shechatanu b'azot metzach al all of a sudden, someone stands up and he screams out, I'm not going to say this prayer. I'm not going to say this prayer. I am not going to do it. So everybody there is already half crazy. So they try to calm the guy down a little bit and say, listen, you know, we've all been through bad things. Please, you know, just they says, no, I'm gonna, I should say on the sins that I did. I did sins. I did sins with my eyes. I did sins with my stubbornness. I did sins with the, the Nazis. They're the ones that did the sins. They're the ones that did the sins. If anyone has to say al chet, if anyone, that, God should say al chet. God was the one who sinned. God let the Nazis do these things. I'm not going to keep quiet. So, no one knew what to say. <laughs> guy, uh, guy has a point. What did he did sins? What did he do last year? He, would, he said, he said, I was afraid to lift up my eyes. I couldn't move my feet. I, if I wouldn't move my feet, I did sins. <clears throat> so God let the Germans do this. So they ask the so they turn to the Kloisenberg Rebbe. He was sitting in front of everyone. And they said, Rabbi, answer him. So the rabbi said, um, he's right. And everyone and everyone burst out crying. And then when they stopped, they were already used to crying a little bit. And so when they stopped, the Rabbi Kleisenberg said, but I'll say, I'll tell you why I say al -Khait. I say al -Khait. about me. He said, when we, in the camp we were in, said the guards, <clears throat> the, the Nazis, they got, I guess they got bored. So every morning they would do the same thing. They would, you'd have to wake up early in the morning. Everyone would stand outside, even if it was freezing cold. <clears throat> they would take one prisoner and they would give him a uh, a brick, and he had to run up like this fire escape or a ladder or something. He had to go up the ladder to the top and come down, and then they would add another brick. And if he succeeded in doing this ten times, they would let him live. But if he didn't, then they would torture him in front of us, and everyone had to watch. Anyone who didn't watch, they would torture that person also. They had guards that were watching. That's what they did every morning for their amusement. Guards. Said everyone in our camp, when they went to sleep, before he went to sleep, everybody had the same prayer on their lips. The prayer was, God, please let me die in my sleep. So I don't have to wake up in the morning and see this. Enough suffering. Right? What do they have to wake up in the morning? Even if they didn't do this, what did they wake up to? Just a world of suffering. But at least a person could think, you know, maybe I'll survive. Maybe there's something for him. But to, to see this every day, everyone prayed. God, please let me die in my sleep so I don't see this terrible thing in the morning. So that's why I said al chet because I also prayed the same prayer, that I should die in my sleep and that I shouldn't see this terrible. Why did I say al sin? I should have prayed, God, get us out of here. Stop the concentration camp. Let us out. Let us free. Stop the suffering. I should have prayed that, but I didn't. I was so contained 
in the suffering that there was there, I couldn't think outside of <clears throat> just the mourning experience, trauma. That's why I said al that I should think big. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, oh, I see we have a question over here. Let me just turn this off for a minute.